Welcome to a new edition of the Yardi PropTech Insights. Uh, today we're going to have a conversation with Dallin Property, uh, two people from Dallin Property, Jai Lely and Bart De Sitter. Uh, Jay, Bart, thank you very much for joining us today and thank you for your cooperation. Uh, can I please ask you to briefly introduce yourselves and Dallin Property? My name is Bart De Sitter. I'm responsible for the Dallin Property development uh, over Europe uh, and as such since for years we have been developing in the UK, in Spain and in uh, mostly in the Netherlands and we will discuss later on how we think we uh, we can make a difference there. This is uh, Jai Lely, I'm Asset and Leasing Manager at Dallin Property in the Netherlands and I'm commercially co-responsible of the day-to-day -day commercial activities uh, within our portfolio and uh, uh, with our developments. Uh, this uh, PropTech Insight series is about uh, technology and the role that technology plays. If you think of Dell and property or the public thinks of Dell and property, uh, it, do you consider, would they consider Dell in a uh, innovative uh, organization? Ever since we started developing, we've always tried to be at the forefront of, uh, of design technology and, and design in general of our warehouses. Uh, and we, we keep on aiming to make the difference there. For most, if you look at the, at the warehouses, we see very stable design. We have seen very little innovation in most of the warehouses. Uh, and although we have seen sustainability attempts and we have seen uh, a, a bit more architectural design in, in, the, in the most of the warehouses, at the end of the day, um, yeah, it is still a financial product and a lot of uh, investors and developers still attempt to look at the costs uh, at a very high level, still attempt to optimize the warehouse to an extent that uh, it's not always as functional as one would like it to be. Um, and we have the luxury of being both a developer and an investor uh, and having a long-term strategy. And therefore, um, we, we look at the warehouse to its most primary function, being a warehouse. Uh, should be functional, should have all the right features in all the right places should have a low operational cost um, and should be at the right location. Uh, location is a choice, all of the rest is design. And uh, by really optimizing the, the warehouse in such a way that it benefits the people working there, benefits the operations, uh, short and long term, um, the end result is a product that our customers appreciate a lot. Mm -hmm. The starting point of that was that we have been owner of an existing portfolio which we purchased uh, in the UK and in the Netherlands. And from, from the results of our experiences with our clients, we made a good inventory of what works, what doesn't work. And uh, we came to a screening on the ideal warehouse. How should it look like and how do we want it to be, uh, to be developed? And that's what we did. Yeah. And if you look at uh, the supply chain cost of a logistics service provider, um, the rent or the housing cost only suffice for 5 to 10 percent of, of the total cost per annum. And if you look at the transport cost and the labor cost, you are res respectively 45 to 32 percent a year, which is a, a far bigger um, factor in, in, in the day to day cost of a logistics service provider. So in our designs, we uh, put the, 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 the workforce, the labor force uh, in, at the first place and uh, creating a, a, a good and a well uh, warehouse, uh, which provides a better, a better working place for the blue color, white color people in the warehouse. Ja, you mentioned that uh, Dallin puts the workers, the workers in the Dallin properties uh, centrally and uh, could, you, could you elaborate a little bit more on that? The, the function of the warehouse nowadays is changing. If you look at a warehouse from a couple of years ago, you see a, a gray box with no windows, with a, with a dark work, workspace for, for the blue collar people, um, which is not sufficient uh, at, the, at, this, at this time. If you want to attract uh, workforce in your warehouse, and you, if you're looking at e-commerce, you're looking at 1,000 to 1,500 people, you have to, be, you have to um, create a more higher architectural design um, 
which is a better working place for your people. And we at Dellen, we think and achieve in that by ways of adding more uh, daylight uh, in, in our warehouses, more green, and also uh, in our designs, which we have made in, for Lidl and Rosta, the little e-commerce center. We also made a terrace for, for, the, for, the, for the working people where, so they can have their lunch break and also the, the, the break cigarette in the, in the, in the, in the, in the uh, during, during the lunchtime. Bart, could you show us an example of where on, on uh, a, uh, of a property where uh, there is this special attention for, for the workers? Because it was quite new to me that uh, also, let's say, in, in, the, in the blue color warehouse area, there is that war of talent. We have heard from many of our clients that uh, retention of the personnel base is becoming more and more difficult. Yeah. Uh, and we want to help our clients in, in making the difference for, for their workforce and having their, their employees being proud arriving at work, uh, but equally working at, at a nice environment. Um, the picture you see here is one of our first developments uh, in the Netherlands. It's the, a distribution center for Lidl uh, with the intention of having uh, e-commerce activity. We will have uh, 1,500 people working there in, ultimately uh, in three shifts and, and what you see if we say we will provide daylight in, in the building, uh, in the location where order picking and sorting will take place, um, you will see at the side of the building uh, ample amounts of, uh, of windows and it really makes a difference in the inside if you're standing at your working place for eight hours um, having all of that light but not just having the lights available, it's also the fact of being able to look outside, which every of us find very natural in an office uh, or even at home, uh, uh, where, where in most warehouses you see uh, light strips at four meters, six meters high, um, providing light, but still not allowing people to look outside and still having the impression of I'm in a closed box uh, all day. Um, well, our windows start at uh, almost ground level so that whilst you're inside you can see outside you can see what's happening you can see some movement and it's a completely different feeling having to work for eight hours in such a place than in a regular very dark and, and invisible uh, location and, and like we said it's it's hard manual work in the warehouse so the sickness absence for the for the work people um, just like the retention is, is higher than than you find in in a another type of business so uh, with our with our designs with our innovative designs we 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 hope this uh, the retention and the sickness absence will be lower th than than in your standard warehouse and what what we heard from our clients is that it, that, that results in, in a positive effect mm -hmm. so yeah in that way we hope to achieve a bit a lower lower labor cost and, and, and a better better warehouse for the future for our clients. So that is looking from from the outside to the property. Um, is a Dellen property also designed differently uh, uh, in uh, in the property itself? So uh, are there any differences in the interior design? One of the things we have noticed is that historically there has been a very sharp separation between white and blue colors. Um, and what we see is that, especially again in, in e-commerce uh, environments uh, or in web fulfillment environments, uh, logistics operation becomes a more complex operation. It's it's the very simple pallet in, pallet out compared to a very complex time-driven uh, order fulfillment environment. Where we believe that the um, interaction between the people managing the flows and the, the workers inside the warehouse. Becomes, equal, uh, becomes more and more important um, because you want to have this feedback, you want to have uh, more complex processes implemented. Um, and in our newest designs, we really want to emphasize that and we want to really create an environment where um, there is normal interaction between those two groups uh, uh, rather than having separate entrances, separate canteens and then really uh, making two completely different environments. We are now designing buildings where uh, actually if it wasn't for regulations, we would have one open environment. Um, but I will show you the example of one of our latest uh, developments in, uh, in Hills, near to Tilburg, where we really want to have people walking in and out the office and, and in and out the uh, warehouse from the office without having a barrier, uh, neither physical nor, nor mentally, uh, to do so. 
This is an example, uh, current development that we're doing in, uh, in Hilse, Tilburg, as we said. And the warehouse opens up to the, um, this is the office block that you see in the middle, which really gives into the warehouse. And uh, from the other side, canteen is on the first floor, uh, as you can see, and both flows offices are really mingling with the warehouse personnel. Um, whilst keeping very close attention to the security. So entrances and exits of the warehouse is nicely separated. You cannot just step into, but once you're inside, this barrier between office and warehouse is really uh, being, being separated, uh, being eliminated actually. Yeah. So it, it really is about uh, integrating the, the different blood groups, the different uh, type of uh, or kind of, uh, uh, of employees of your tenants. Um, do you do, how does this resonate with your tenants? Is this uh, something that, you know, is a nice to have or do you uh, see and hear from your tenants that it becomes more and more a have to have? We see a little bit of a diverse response there. Um, mm. Uh, as, as, as in many businesses, there, there's people who are early adopters and there's uh, companies who are a bit more traditional. Um, uh, we, we've seen uh, one of our clients actually at the end still deciding to make a hard separation. Um, at the end of the day, it's, it's their choice. Um, what we try to do is make one design that uh, basically would be used for both, both clients. Um, but it shouldn't stop us from, from our beliefs. Uh, it shouldn't stop us from designing warehouses where we think ultimately this will be the future. Uh, we spend a lot of time uh, really thinking, okay, with, what's the new generation coming up? Um, uh, we see millennials coming more and more into the work stream. Um, what are their needs? What are their concerns? And how will it ever a reflection and how will it have a result on, on what they expect to see and what they expect to have into uh, such a work environment and um, and that that's why we think we should be at the forefront uh, and as always being there you will have some people who are eager to join you and others will be a bit more reluctant and yeah. by making smart designs you will uh, you will get there and and this is one example there's there's other examples where it is it is very obvious and very simple to do and where Basically, everybody is uh, is in line. Can we focus uh, maybe a little bit on the operational side and the uh, the role that technology plays in in the whole operations? Um, at this moment, how would you rate the use of technology uh, in a Dallin property? And maybe you can also elaborate a little bit on where do you think that. Uh, this is going in the future. We, um, we ourselves find ourselves in a changing process. Um, when, when we started our business in uh, 2014, uh, first instance we were a pure investor um, purchasing uh, pre-lit assets uh, and as such had outsourced uh, most of our contacts with our clients uh, as well on the commercial side uh, as on the property management side. And quite early in the process and, and actually together with the start of developments, we felt that uh, this was a big mistake in a sense that, yes, it was a logic choice to make at the time, but um, it is about the tenants. It's about the use of their buildings. Um, so being that remote and having all those steps in between really creates a, um, a disadvantage in, in many ways. So gradually we have been staffing our Rotterdam office, uh, which is a, is a perfect example of that. Uh, with a lot of people that are into day-to-day -day -day interaction with our clients. Um, and in terms of technology, obviously we want to manage all of these uh, communication streams. And also there we've seen that traditionally a lot of those streams are still handled in a very, very manual process in a very uh, Excel-based, uh, email-based work stream, whereas uh, we're in the full process together with uh, VTRD, by the way, in, in making an automated work stream, making an automated information stream, and actually having people like Jai being able to focus on the relation with the client rather than managing all administrative and reporting processes. 
Uh, and yes, in that way, we are a big believer of technology. Um, yeah, I, I was I was um, inspired by by a question when you said um, our well, what our future where should look like, and that's also a process where we at Dellen are now uh, fully in. Uh, matter of fact, we have now finished our first designs for our new warehouse in the hills at Tilburg. And in that way, I don't see it as a technology, but I see it as a, as a step, uh, warehouse 2.0 for us. And with labor also comes, and with a lot of labor, a lot of workforce also comes uh, safety. And I think our future warehouses also with, with, with the, help of the, the help of technology also becomes a safer workplace for, for all the people working there. Uh, what we created with this warehouse is a separation of flows between um, between the uh, the trucks and the vans and the cars uh, for for your for your clients and for your personnel. So uh, there will never be a car in in the, in the loading area of the warehouse, which creates a safer situation. And also, when people uh, park on the parking deck, they have a direct uh, connection and entrance with with the warehouse and with the office space. Um, which which creates a safer situation and a more uh, better overview of of all the people and the sec on security level also over there. Um, and if you look at technology and our future um, our future vision of where it should look like, I think this this will this will be it. And which create uh, not only like a, a simplistic, simplistic office in, in a warehouse, but a high-end office, with, with this, with it, which, which is a, a good working environment to be in, which people will be proud of, which will, which will create a lower sickness absence, will, uh, will, which will create a higher motivated workforce in, so, uh, as well in the, in the warehouses and the office space. And um, you know, which create a better, a better warehouse, a better, better workplace for the future for all logistics service providers. When you when you show with us this uh, 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 these uh, these plans, um, it looks very much like an office and and, and like a high end office. Uh, yeah. Is that uh, an insult or a compliment? <laughs> the the general perception of a warehouse is 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 a simplistic, boring, ugly gray box in in a, in a green field and we see it as a as a as, as, as a we rather see it as a as a high-end office with uh yeah with a box behind it then yeah. as a then as a first a box and you never you don't see the office anywhere so uh, and and with, with some, some um yeah uh, simple changes in the design which are not that costly we think we create a, a better warehouse and also a more future proof, proof warehouse to wrap up this conversation, um, could I ask you to share some views and some thoughts? Uh, because when you say logistics, you automatically think of last mile, etc. So, what are the views uh, of Dellen uh, on the future of this concept? And could you also touch on uh, limitations there might already be in place or are expected in the future uh, with regards to uh, emissions, etc. Yeah. So obviously, um, last mile is a is a very hot topic in uh, in logistics. Um, for sure, we know that many municipalities and cities are considering uh, low emission zones, and uh, this will drastically change the distribution into these urban areas. Uh, also, the time that you would drive with large trailers to the city heart and then start delivering shops is also uh, probably going to be a time of the past. So, yes, there's, there's a big need of urban infrastructure at the borders or, or slightly inside of the cities. Yeah. And again, there we, we, we stayed faithful to our philosophy. First, uh, before just starting to buy or build uh, smaller units, we, we went to the market. We had uh, contacted more than 80 companies and had uh, conducted a whole series of interviews, really going to the detail of what is it that you need? What, what is urban for you? Uh, what is the real requirement? And uh, we believe we have a good understanding of that. Um, and as such, developed an, a tailor-made building that is, again, future-proof, um, that will allow to fulfill these, uh, these services uh, in a way that we now feel that the market is actually requiring them. If you have, we ask it to our clients in the Netherlands, but if you if you ask to all the logistics service suppliers in Europe, what the biggest challenges will be in the future, 
then the top three, one of them will be uh, providing uh, big, dense urban areas. So the last mile delivery will be definitely will be the top three of, of those challenges. Mm -hmm. And with our, uh, yeah, together with Book Consult International, we, we interviewed, I think, 50 to 80 parties in, in, in asking that question. And uh, to, uh, Bart, I think Bart will now show up uh, what we think uh, a last mile delivery up can look like uh, from, from Dallin property. So we, well, we noticed this, uh, there's, there's a need for lots and lots of transport. Um, you, the docks are uh, hidden a little bit because they are ground level. Um, there's, there's a need for lots and lots of parking spaces because uh, typically today the drivers with the vans come to the work with their van and they leave in the night. But uh, once you're using electrified vehicles, drivers will come with their car uh, and then take the van which has been charging uh, overnight. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we came to a uh, completely adapted uh, facility that uh, provides this, uh, this solution. And knowing that land is restricted very close to the borders of the municipalities and the cities, we, we are going into the air with, uh, again, a parking solution above the loading docks to make sure that we maximize the use of the very limited supply of land that is available. Yeah. Uh, secondly, we have seen a very big variety in, in demand of, of space required. We've seen demand going from 600 square meters to 3,000, and then we have a full range uh, in between. And so we, we worked on a solution that was able to be, uh, to be very modular and to accommodate this, um, this requirement. Uh, and by offering very standardized modules of uh, 600 square meters, um, you will see that uh, any client that comes by can have a very transport intensive solution. Uh, we, can, we can provide him with uh, lots and lots of loading capacity uh, and he can choose basically the size he would like to have uh, for his operation. So here you can see the, the ground level which just sits below the parking space of, uh, of the cars which then leads into the, uh, to the offices. Yeah. Uh, and you can see yeah, it's, it is a cross dock facility, uh, but made in such a way that uh, many, many small modules can either be used uh, separately uh, or can be combined to, uh, to a large place. And again here, every time again, we, we, we have some basic principles. Good flows, trucks, vans should be separated from the cars and the, and the people, not only for the safety, uh, of the people itself, but also on security level, it avoids that you have people wandering around uh, in your loading and unloading process and, and actually helps you to keep your theft problem under control. Yeah, and in, in a nutshell, then, if you look at the specs of, of the units, the units are, uh, one unit is uh, approximately 600 square, 600 square meters, uh, which provides with a loading platform where, um, where uh, four uh, vents can uh, can dock on every unit has one uh, loading um, loading dock for for a truck and one ramp with a with a door uh, with a with a door and ground level so um, and it's easily scaled up to 3600 uh, 3, square meters so if you look at your urban uh, unit you have one unit with uh, yeah with, with enough loading docks with enough space with enough parking space and if you remember the first visual Bart showed to you, uh, you also see the solar panels on the roof. So uh, the building is completely self-sufficient. If there are some inquiries for additional parking spaces, we, we can, there are also opportunities to provide them on the roof if a, if a client would want, which are very, very expensive. But in the urban area, one thing is for sure, everybody needs parking. So, And just to show that... Uh... We are 100% faithful to our, uh, our philosophy. Also here, we have a terrace. The workers can sit up. But that is the, the, uh, one of the central things uh, in Dylan's messaging is, uh, is, is definitely uh, put the end user at the central place and, and basically build or design uh, the property uh, around that with uh, all the different functions. Uh, Bart, Jai, uh, thank you very much for your time. 
uh, it was uh, really helpful and, and interesting to understand uh, Darren's philosophy. Uh, next to that, I thought it was also a fun and uh, 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 an interesting uh, conversation. Thank you very much for your time, and we'll talk soon again. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Bye-bye.